Now we'll take a look at another surface that is hyperboloid of two sheets. Here's the standard form of that equation. So you have uh, all terms squared. And note that there are two negative signs right here equals to a constant. So that's how you know this is a hyperboloid of two sheets, similar to hyperboloid of one sheet, except that for hyperboloid of one sheet, you'll have one negative sign. Here you have two negative signs. So note the difference. So let's take a look at what are the traces and then we'll graph a general picture of this surface. For, um, for the center of this, we can write that down. So that's gonna be X, O, Y, O, Z, O. So those are your centers right here. These are the center of this surface. And then whichever axis is unique. For example, here, both of these have negative sign. So Z doesn't have a negative sign. So that means your graph will be along the Z axis. So keep that in mind. And um, now let's take a look at the traces. So if you, if you make, um, let's suppose X disappear from the equation. So if X is gone from the equation, then we're looking at something like this, which is an equation of a hyperbola. So it will be an hyperbola on ZY plane. So in ZY plane, you're going to have hyperbolas. Similarly, if you make um, Y disappear, in X, Y, Z plane, you're also going to have traces of hyperbolas. Now, if you make Z disappear and you're just looking at X and Y, modifying the negative signs, that will be in X, Y plane. The traces are going to be um, circles or ellipses. So it'll be ellipses or circles, depending on A or B. So I forgot to put this there. So the, those are the traces. Now let's put this together in a, a 3D image. So here's our X, Y, and Z plane. And let's go ahead and draw the uh, negative axes as well. So here's your X, Y, and Z. Here's our negative Z negative x and negative y. Now, since z was positive, it's going to be along the z-axis. Now let's pay attention to um, yz plane. So in yz plane, we have um, an, uh, a hyperbola along the z-axis and z is positive. So you're gonna have a hyperbola that looks. So let's go ahead and assume the center is right here. So for simplicity, I'm gonna assume that's your X, O, Y, O, Z, O. And then along the Z axis, we're gonna go C units up, C units down to create that hyperbola. So let's suppose this is C units up. So here's the first hyperbola. So let's be very creative on this. Okay. And then the second hyperbola will be going down negative C. So it'll be something like this. And then, so I'm just gonna erase these for simplicity. And then um, along the Y, uh, Z, X, we also have hyperbola. So that will be the hyperbola, maybe something like this. So that's along the, X, Z plane. And then the traces in the X, Y plane are ellipses or circles. So perhaps we'll do something like this. So let's suppose this is an ellipse. Let me fill this in. So something like that. So there you go. And then these are all traces in the X, Y plane. So this is what we call an hyperboloid of two sheets.
let's go ahead and sketch this surface. So this is a hyperbola of two sheets because everything is squared equals to a constant. There's two negative signs. So now, since z is positive, it's going to be along the z-axis. The center of this is going to be 0, 0, 0. And then along the z-axis, we're going to go one unit up, one unit down, because you can write this as over 1 squared, just to keep it exactly in standard form. All of these are 1 squared. So now, here's our sketch. Let's go ahead and label these. And I'm going to draw the negative z-axis right here. I don't really need negative x and y for now, but let's let's go with this. So the center is right here, 0, 0, 0. Now, since it's along the z-axis, in z-direction, we're going to go one unit up from the center. So let's suppose this is 1. So the coordinates for this would be 0, 0, 1. And we'll create our first hyperbola and the uh, traces. So it looks something like this. The second, so this is this distance right here is just one unit from the center. And then we're also going to go down one unit. So let's suppose this is negative one. So the coordinates here are zero, zero, negative one. Those are the vertices. So here we went down negative one unit from the center. And let's make our hyperbola. So something like this. And now we do our traces. So I'm going to try to redraw the second one. It looks a little weird. So again, be very creative with your pictures. So that way you can wire yourself. Oh, there we go. And these are our traces in the XY plane. And if you want to look at the hyperbola in the XZ plane, it's going to come out something like this. It's going to be the one right in the back, like that. And then something like this. All right, there you go. So that's your hyperbola of two sheets. And for this one, we have to do a little bit of work to translate this into standard form. So we're going to go ahead and complete the square. Let's rearrange the terms. So you have x squared minus 6x, leave a space, and we have 4y squared. There is no linear factor for y. And the next term is z. So this is a negative z squared plus 4z is equal to negative 9. So I push the constant to the other side. Now, we're also going to complete the square for z as well, so I'm going to leave a little bit of space here. So for the x variable, we take half of this term, and then we square that. So that will be 3. You square it, you'll get 9. So add 9 to this side, and then we're also going to add 9 on this side. Similarly, for the z, we have to play around with it a little bit since this is a negative one. So we'll have to factor out that negative. So that would be... Uh, so rewrite a little bit. So I'll pull out the negative 1. That means I have to rearrange the sign for this term. It'll be negative 4. So for z, you have to do it like this because when you're completing the square, you want to make sure your quadratic term has a uh, coefficient 1. So I pull out the negative. Now if you redistribute, it's the exact same thing from the beginning. Now let's complete the square. So I take half of the linear factor. So that would be 2. You square it, you'll get 4. So I'm going to add a 4 inside the parentheses, but overall it's a negative 1 times 4. So I need a negative 4 on that side as well to keep a balance. And now we're ready to group them. So for the x variable, this is going to be x minus 3 squared. For the y variable, there's nothing to do. For the z variable, we have negative z minus 2 squared is equal to, and combine these, you will have negative 4. Now, we want to make sure this is always 1, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4. So divide everything by negative 4, and that would give us uh, negative x minus 3 squared over 4. For the y term, you'll have just negative y squared. For the z, it will be positive 
z minus 2 square over 4 equals to 1. So that is the standard form. And if you like, you can rewrite these four as a squared. So you'll have two squared, two squared. So you know how far to travel along the z and the x-axis. Okay. Now, this is a hyperbola of two sheets because there is two negative sign. They're all squared equals to one. So good to go. Now we're going to sketch, find the center and start sketching. So the center of this uh, surface would be in x coordinates will be three, y coordinate will be zero, and z coordinate will be two. That's the center. So let's go ahead and sketch this. So So here's my x, y, and z plane. I'm also going to draw the negative x's as well. So it's a little bit more accurate. So there is my negative z. There's my negative x. Here's my negative y. Okay, so maybe I should straighten this out a little bit more. All right, good enough. So the center is the first thing you want to plot. So we have three in the x direction. So that would be right here, zero in the y direction and two in the z direction. So something like that. I'm actually going to erase this so it doesn't look weird. So let's suppose that's the point, uh, the center, three, zero, two. And now... Since z is positive, it's going to be along the z-axis. So in the z-direction, from the center, we're going to go two units up because of that. So you'll go two units up, two units down, and create your hyperboloid of two sheets. So if I go two units up, I'm going to be somewhere right here. So initially, z was at 2, so this point will have the coordinates 3, 0, 4. That's one of the vertex. And then you create the shape something like that. Okay, and then the next hyperbola will be below two, so it'll be one, two, so somewhere right here. And this coordinate will be three comma zero comma zero, because you just went two units down in the z direction, so you're at the x-axis, something like this. So again, trying my best to draw this, so hopefully you can do better. There you go. Looks something like that. And now let's do our traces. Ellipses here. And then you have ellipses here. And just create a couple more to get a better picture. All right, so this is it. Uh, now, if you want, you can put in the other hyperbola that's on the X and Z plane. So perhaps something like this. So that's the one really hard to draw because it's in the background. So like that. So those are the other two hyperbolas. All right. So this is it. This is it for hyperbola of two sheets.